The version 4.4 special program just ended and we just got official information on what 5 stars are going to be running in the next version. So for the first half, we have Cloud Retainer or Shen Yun alongside Nahida with the second half being a Xiao and a Yae rerun. Hello everyone, Ethereal here and this time around in this video, we'll be doing a shoot you poll video but instead of reviewing two separate phases, we will be taking a look at all characters in the entire patch. Starting off with Shen Yun. So Shen Yun is a 5 star anemo character catalyst unit from Li Wei with her theme being kind of like a plunging attack support. Her elemental skill or sky ladder allows her to basically leap up super high in the air of which she can actually do it continuously up to three times and afterwards performing an attack will allow her to do a plunging attack and that's considered plunging attack damage. Her elemental burst she summons this little bird crane thing called the star wicker which will follow your active character for a set duration and this will actively heal your characters. I believe it's the active character and it allows your active character to actually jump from a super high location thus allowing them to perform a plunging attack and every time a plunging attack is performed with the star wicker available on field it will do a nemo damage so while we don't really have full information on her other abilities on her ascension passives constellations etc i think it's quite easy to really guess based on the theme and the characters that we're going to be getting in version 4.4 like Garming being a plunging attack dps that she's basically going to be the shun her for plunging attacks so we can safely assume that she's essentially the plunging attack attack support. So if I were to just uh, share my quick opinion since we don't really have full information on her entire kit. Her elemental skill seems to be like a minor damage thing. I don't know how much particles it generate but I assume it's going to be a decent amount but otherwise it does look pretty good for exploration. Her elemental burst giving the ability for every other character to perform plunging attack is going to be quite interesting because I've seen people talk about the potential of what she's able to bring to the meta when the new version comes out. You know things like Hu Tao plunging attacks or Dragon Strike Diluc is now more consistent as we saw in the live stream and obviously probably having some sort of ability to buff existing plunging attack characters aka Xiao but it will be interesting to see what she's able to do and how strong she is as a buffer for this kind of niche compared to other options like Yolan with Ascension 4 or Bennett with the good old attack buff maybe Faruzan for a Nemo and obviously Furina in these uh, hyper carry Xiao teams especially I think Xiao I'm mostly pulling Cloud Retainer for Xiao but I do like her design so I'm probably going to build her. I do have enough uh, resources to bring her up so we'll have to see how good she is for when she comes out. In terms of what I can really feel, I'm going to, I'm just going to estimate this. I think she's going to be just the Shen her for plunging attack and I don't think she's going to be any more than that. Although her being an Anemo Catalyst unit and also a healer, I think there is some potential to actually use her in certain teams that possibly will replace Jin because I think you can consistently trigger the 4 Fairy Descent effect or at least like it's easier compared to using something like Jean. Maybe it offers a little bit more versatility compared to Jean, so I, I don't really know in terms of that comparison, but we'll have to see about her when she comes out. Now, let's move on to the next character. So Nahida is a 5 star Dendro Catalyst character from Sumeru. Being the Dendro Archon, she definitely lives up to her reputation being how strong she is as a unit. So obviously when we think of Dendro, we always think of their ability to either do damage based on something like spread or how well they're able to provide elemental application and some extra support for any Dendro based reactions. And I can definitely say that Nahida definitely delivers and exceeds that expectation. So her normal attack is nothing special but it would be something that you would use often if you want to run her as an on-field dendro applicator and a charge attack there's an interesting tech with a charge attack where because the charge attack has a separate icd so what you would do in like a hyper bloom team or a burgeon team is that you could do a few normal attacks and then you could do n4 into a, a final charge attack and that would have a bigger hitbox and i think apply a little bit more dendro so if you do want more seats it's actually pretty nice her elemental skill is definitely her bread and butter basically she enters a camera mode if you were to hold it and you can basically mark enemies within a certain range within a certain area and after they mark they do a dendro damage and this marking or the, the, the seed of skanda will last for i believe 25 seconds and if you trigger any sort of dendro reaction whether it be burning or bloom or i believe uh, aggravate or spread the seed of skanda will actually do damage and apply dendro to all the enemies that are marked so if you trigger a reaction on a single mark enemy the rest of the enemy will take damage from nahida's elemental skill so her elemental burst is 
is not the biggest part. Basically, she builds a shrine, a very, very big shrine. And depending on what elements you have in your team, it will buff her abilities in different ways. If you have Pyro, her skill damage will be increased. If you have Electro, the skill will trigger even faster or more often. And if you have Hydro, the duration of the burst will be increased by a certain amount. If there are two of each two of these elements, the effects will be greater, though it's not really that monumental. Her Ascension 1 is probably the most important part for her buffing capability. Basically, when she uses her burst, any active character under the shrine will gain 25% or rather a quarter of elemental mastery of the party member with the highest EM. If we were to do simple math, if your Nahida has a thousand elemental mastery and let's say you have your Alhatham on field, Alhatham will gain a quarter of that, which is 250 elemental mastery as a buff. But this only applies to the active character, so it's actually rather quite situational and sometimes in certain Hyper Bloom or Virgin teams, you generally don't need that EM buff because you're gonna be on fielding Nahida and maybe if your Nahida is built for damage, it will be pretty nice, but most of the time, it might be a DPS loss. It is still better than nothing. You can also use this in the likes of Burn Melt Gan Yu because that works. Her Ascension 4, it gives bonus damage and crit rate to her elemental skill damage based on how many points of elemental mastery she has beyond the first 200, which is pretty nice. So it allows you to actually build more towards EM and less towards crit and your skill would still do a decent amount of damage. So my overall thoughts on Nahida is that she's basically a very good Dendro support. Because nowadays, right, when you think about what you want from a Dendro character in this current meta, for a DPS, you want someone like Tinari or Alhatham who is able to dish out a good amount of damage and take advantage of the quicken reaction in order to buff their personal damage. But if you want to talk about in terms of Dendro supports, you want them to not only be good at applying Dendro on the enemies, they also have to offer some form of utility that just makes your life easier when you play any of these Dendro teams. And this is what Nahida is able to offer. When you compare her to a lot of the other options, her elemental skill not only lasts for a very long time, against certain content where you're going against, say, a very small amount of enemies or very tough enemies like a single boss or a few Kairagis or whatnot, you can just use a skill and swap off, do your abilities in Spiral Abyss for the next 15-20 seconds, and then once your first rotation is done, you can swap back to her and then just re reapply the mark whenever you want. Because her Dendro application is tied to how you need to apply a Dendro reaction onto enemies marked by the skill, and there is like a interval of I think 2.5 seconds by default, assuming you don't have an Electro character. And that's actually pretty nice because I think the only other characters that can apply Dendro off-field consistently is probably Kolei and Dendro Traveler and even Baiju. But Baiju's interval and her his Dendro application is only single target, I believe, with his burst. Kolei's burst lasts for a very short duration, so you're gonna have to rely on her Ascension that creates the Floral Sprout around your active character. And even that, the range is still very much tied to a melee distance so that's not really as good. Dendro Traveler is, I think, probably the second best thing, but the only downside is that Dendro Traveler will require you to play around the infusing the lamp with Hydro so that the range is increased. And even then, it's like the duration is still lax in comparison, especially when you don't have C2 in order to buff the lamp's duration to 15 seconds. So Nahida already excels in that sense of off-field Dendro application. Then you consider her on-field Dendro application is also pretty good because uh, like I mentioned just now in the normal attack section, you can actually do a few like four normal attacks into a charge attack and I believe her charge attack does have a separate ICD which means it allows you to apply Dendro more often and if you use her in teams like Hyper Bloom or Burgeon, this allows you to generate more seeds which in turn technically increases the team's overall DPS. So in that sense, it is actually pretty nice. She's actually pretty good for an on-field Dendro applicator and her burst buffing elemental mastery and buffing her skill is also quite situational. Most of the time, if unless you're running like a DPS Nahida, her burst is not really necessary in teams like where you're mostly focused on Hyper Bloom and she's going to be the on-field, uh, she's going to be playing on-field Nahida or like Virgin and stuff. But if you are running characters like Alhatham or Sino or Kaching and you have Nahida in that team, it would be within your best interest to use her burst so that you can at least give elemental mastery to these active characters so that their reaction damage like Quicken or whatnot, they Quicken or Spread should do more damage and that utility is already quite decent. So overall, I think Nahida is quite 
a good well rather the best dendro support character that we have right now i personally would say for anyone who doesn't have nahida who are interested in trying out a dendro team like hyper bloom or virgin i would say she is pretty good in that context but yeah i don't really have much to say about her she's just a really good dendro support if you would like to go for single copy i think that would be within your best of interest within your best interest if you want to go do dendro teams if you want to go for constellations i think c2 is going to be really huge to increase your overall damage ceiling for any sort of dendro teams you would like to run her with now let us move on to the next unit Xiao is a 5-star Animo unit from Li Wei wielding the pole arm as his weapon. His playstyle is mostly centered around a DPS that mostly stay on field, where most of his damage actually comes from his outer attack, specifically his plunging attack. His normal attack string does look pretty cool, but you're not going to be using it most of the time. His charge attack might be used in certain situations where you want to use a specific optimal combo against single target, but the most important part is really just his plunging attack. His elemental skill basically lets him dash through enemies and it can be used mid-air, start with a default of 2 charges, you do any more damage, it generates particles and that's about it. His elemental burst puts him in a state where basically his weapon gets an Animo infusion, which cannot be overridden by any other infusion, and he will lose HP continuously every 1 second for 15 seconds overall. His ascension is quite minor, to be honest. Like His ascension 1 basically increases his damage for every 3 seconds that he stays in his burst, but it's a very small value and it ramps up all the way to the end, so you're probably going to be seeing like a slight damage bonus from that side of things so it's really nothing special his ascension 4 increases the damage of the subsequent use of his elemental skill which is not really relevant unless you have constellation 6 now my thoughts on xiao so for my account i got xiao when he rerun back in the lantern right when shenhe came out in version 2.0 because i got lucky enough to actually get my shenhe by winning 50 50 and i also won 50 50 another time again to get xiao i've been using him for quite a while and keep in mind that this was be farrow's on xiao because if you were to talk about Xiao before Farazan was released, he was actually quite a mediocre hyper carry DPS. Because when you compare to a lot of the other options pre Farazan, because I don't remember when Farazan was released, but it has to be in the middle of like the Dendro patch, like 3. Point something patch, right? I don't quite remember exactly. But when you compare it to before the Dendro patch got released, you have other options like Raiden, Ayaka, Yoimiya. This is like the Inazuma gang. And you consider like the Liyue gang, we already have like Utao with the high vape damage. We have Ganyu before Inazuma became a thing. So even compared to most of this, I think Xiao back in the day was really mostly used for the likes of maybe Floor 11 or against content where there are multiple waves of enemies or there are multiple enemies together where you can use the punching attack to hit multiple of them at once. And that kind of arbitrarily increases his overall damage in that rotation only in that specific situation. Against single target, he's kind of okay. I've definitely heard of, uh, there are certain YouTubers out there, I think was it she goes by the name Shin Tenzu or something? I'll probably just look it up later on who is like a Xiao main who does like Xiao speed runs and before Faruzan even came out I think Xiao is actually kind of okay but when you compare to a lot of the other options he's actually rather mediocre of course when Faruzan came out that's a whole other thing which is why we're gonna talk about Faruzan in the context of his hyper carry teams so the thing with a lot of the Animo hyper carriers right so we all know by now that Faruzan is basically the support made for a Nemo DPS because everything that Faruzan does quite literally she can reduce the Nemo resistance of enemies which can only really be done by Constellation for Jean and a Zhongli shield and she also buffs a Nemo damage bonus which I believe is unique to only her and no one else because Kazuha only buffs like Pyro Hydro Electro Cryo damage bonus but not a Nemo Geo so in that sense Faruzan is already quite necessary if you do intend to run a hyper carry Xiao team or hyper carry Wanderer or you want to just make your Hazel do a lot of damage from his punch and if we talk about his hyper carry teams you usually would run like kind of just the same group of teams that isn't really much variety because we don't really have a character that will buff punching attack although by the time i'm recording this i bet shen yun is probably gonna be out so it would be interesting to see how shen yun is going to work with xiao and how much of the damage increase that she will be able to provide but i think right now his best team has to be bennett on a healing build faruzan preferably at c6 but at least you need a faruzan at minimum if you want to buff his damage and then very likely furina and uh even before furina was a thing his older like carry teams was probably like bennett Faruzan with Song Li, and you can kind of see where the problem is showing up with hyper carry teams for him because at minimum you absolutely need Faruzan and maybe in certain situations you want to use Bennett but you are going to restrict yourself with circle impact and then you're going to need another character like Song Li or maybe when the patch comes out probably Cloud Retainer to buff his punching attacks even further and the problem is that it's, it's quite situated
situational. You do really need these set of characters in order to run Hyper Carry. You can definitely run him as the other unconventional playstyle, which is to run like Triple EM, Favonius, uh, Favonius Spear with like Rational Team, They're basically with the four Viridescent set to kind of reduce the enemy elemental resistance. But that's not really what we really want to run him for. And that's a, it's a very interesting playstyle. You can use his normal attacks, but otherwise most people, at least personally, I would prefer to run Hyper Carry rather than that unconventional four Viridescent build. So I would say overall Xiao is quite situational. If you really want to run him for his hyper carry team, you definitely at least need Faruzan at absolute minimum. And maybe Bennett, Furina, Cloud Retainer. If you want, like, we only really have like a few variations based on these supports for his team. So he is quite constricted in that context. But if you do want to pull for him, I hope you guys can keep this in mind. Because yeah, because without these units, uh, Xiao is just really an okay DPS unit. Anyways, let us move on to the next unit. So Yai Miko is a 5-star Electro Catalyst unit from Inazuma. Being a Raiden's friend, she is actually quite an interesting pair to run it together with the Electro Archon herself. Her normal attacks is nothing special. You'll probably use it sometimes if you do want to run an Aggravate team. Maybe you want to use Charge Attack to do the ICD, uh, no ICD bypass thing, but it's really not the biggest part of the kit. So her elemental skill basically leaves behind these totems, of which these totems will randomly strike a nearby opponent at certain intervals. I believe it will strike down an enemy every 0.5 seconds for 1.5 seconds and then there's like a short cooldown afterwards. And the way the totem mechanic works is that at a certain range, if the totems are near each other, they will basically level up the level of the totem and thus it will actually do more damage. Her elemental burst is quite tricky but it still is cool to use. Basically she falls a lightning down on an enemy that is basically like in front of her or wherever she is aiming and then based on how many totems she has on field, they will be consumed in order to create more follow-up lightning strikes. I think one of her ascension basically refunds the cooldown for her totem which is her ascension 1. So generally you would always think like her playstyle it's a triple E, uh, you swap around, do some stuff, and eventually you, after some time has passed because the totem starts for 14 seconds, you would come back to Yai, and then you would uh, use a burst, get all the totems again, then put a triple E, and then move on, rinse and repeat. So yeah, Ascension 1 is the one that basically like, every time she uses a burst, every totem destroys, resets the cooldown for one charge of a skill, which means you can do a triple E, burst into triple E. Ascension 4 increases the damage done by her skill based on every point of elemental mastery she has, which is quite nice given that you're probably going to be running aggravate with some ele elemental mastery buffers like Nahida or whatnot or you could probably consider running her with an elemental mastery sans it should be not that far different from an attack sans now if you were to talk about Yai for the longest time I think when Yai came out everyone wanted her to be better than Fischl but at the end of the day she's always compared to Fischl though I think both of them have things that they can kind of strive at Fischl is obviously mercy single target I think both of them are kind of mercy single target and C6 Fischl and C0 Yai I feel would be like about at the same level of performance but at the end of the day, I personally want Yai because I want to run an aggravate team where I basically run Yai together with Fischl rather than separating them because, you know, the whole point of running aggravate teams is that you generally want to have two Electro or two Dendro or maybe a Dendro and a Nemo. So we need to find some characters to fit in the slot for the two Electro characters. Who would be better suited for that slot aside from Yai and Fischl? Like, why settle with one Fischl when you can settle with both? And in terms of her character or at least like feeling of playing her, I have had the privilege of trying out different Yai teams on one of my viewers account when I do the uh, bi-weekly abyss reset where they, I basically clear and do 36 star abyss for their account and the only thing I really don't like about Yai is that I wish that there was a way for you to hold your skill rather than tapping it so tapping it summons one totem right so you have to tap it three times which sometimes gets a little bit annoying because you don't actually gain any iframe in that so you can actually get interrupted directly after to summon your burst and in situations in spiral abyss that might actually kill you so it's not really all the best. Deep down, I do wish that Hoyo actually puts a quality of life option where you can hold your elemental skill and it would summon all three totems right next to each other so that would save you so much time in putting them up. And for her elemental burst, she has similar problems with Ayato where after the burst animation is done, there's a short period of time where she can actually get hit and you can't actually move. So basically she's locked in animation despite you already seeing like the third person perspective. So that's also another thing I would I really don't like because there were times when I want to use my 
neighbors, I get hit or she dies. So it's just quite annoying. It's a very minor thing, but for any future or Yae pullers, anyone who wants to pull for Yae, I want you guys to keep this in mind. And firstly, what I think about her, well, she is basically just a five-star official, but official is a pretty good unit, so I don't think that's a particularly bad thing because it's kind of like the whole Sing Chu Yolan situation, right? People always compare Sing Chu to Yolan, then give it a few months, people realize that, you know what, why not run them both? And I think in this situation, running Ryan Fischl in an aggravate team is actually pretty good. I've also tried another team, which is the Raiden Yae team, the, the triple mommy team with uh, Sara, basically a Ra Raiko, or I think that's what they call it, the Raiden with Yae, with Sara, with a very certain pseudo complex rotation where you can use Sara with C2 to buff everyone's damage and you snap on Kazuha to buff their damage to oblivion. This was like the pre-Dendro hyper electro team, at least from what I remember. I've tried all these teams and I personally running Yae together with Raiden feels really good because if you have a well built Yae that can do damage you have a Sara that's at least C2 and you have a very very good Raiden and you snap on any like Kazuha or whatnot I feel like Raiden is able to kind of solve Yae's energy issues and it just feels really good because Raiden's skill does buff the active character's burst so that means Yae's burst will just do even more than it actually does so I really do like that team and personally because the next patch is going to be the Lantern right aka Chinese New Year and we all know that Lantern Rite or Chinese New Year is the real anniversary for Genshin Impact and not the actual release. We are definitely going to get a lot of polls, at minimum 20 free polls, even considering F2Ps. And I've seen, uh, I've had some dreams where I have had these vivid images that we are going to get quite a lot of gems, even considering the free to play standards before even the gems that you're going to get from Welkins. So I actually will have enough to very likely guarantee Cloud Retainer and Yae. And if I do get lucky, I might might be able to save enough to maybe guarantee whatever 5 star, maybe like someone like Chiori, Articino, or Cloren in freaking version 4.5. So it's going to be a good patch. I'm going to be broke and I'm going to spend a lot of my time building both of them, but it's going to be a very good patch. But overall, I think Yae is basically just a premium version official, but she does look pretty good. And if you're into that kind of stuff, then Yae can definitely work. If you do get Yae and you do have Raiden and Sara, I do highly recommend trying to run the Raiden Yae team because it's really satisfying to play. There's just something about these three with this weird kind of synergy that works really well with each other that really satisfy me when I play it. To close things off, I think all units have their own fair share of value. If we were to talk about pure value alone, Nahida is going to be pretty good. Yae definitely has some value if you want to run like an aggravate kind of DPS team. While Shen Yun and Xiao is going to be very specific to the plunging attack meta, but it would definitely be interesting to see how well they work together. So I hope you guys found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you guys enjoyed the video, just give it a like and subscribe if you would like to see more of this kind of content and leave your comment down below on what characters you will be pulling for version 4.4 let us know why you're skipping all of them for maybe an upcoming character like Chiri or Koran I don't know what the rumors are going on right now but yeah just just share your thoughts and then share your decisions on whether you decide to pull or skip this entire version anyways that is it for now this is Ethereal signing off